This illustration uh, covers the requirements for supply side source connections in accordance with 705.11 D as in dog and E as in ed. The purpose of change, a new section has been accepted and been added to address supply side source connection for an electrical power production source. Now to uh, review the notes that kind of uh, explain this new section, let's review the note one. And uh, notice note one states, when bonding and grounding, C250.92 B is in boy, 700.7 B as in boy, if it's an emergency system type generator, 701.7 uh, B if it's a legally required standby generator, 702.7 uh, B as in boy for optional standby uh, type generators, and then also we should uh, deal with 702.11 A and B if it's an optional standby generator. But we want to be sure that we classify the generator, as we said many times in this presentation, uh, 700.2 for an emergency, 701.2 for legally required standby generators, and 702 uh, for uh, uh, optional standby generators. And then again, uh, I would like to point out to the user uh, of the 700, 701, and 702 articles to review the article that deals with your design and installation very carefully to make sure that one of the changes in there that we haven't uh, called out for you uh, doesn't affect your design and installation. Now, uh, the notes kind of explain uh, the new section, uh, the, the purpose of the change. So next, I would just uh, look at the call-outs. It's just for your information. Uh, notice that first, the conductors between the generator and the transfer switch uh, could be, say, number six copper or larger by 705.11b when you uh, are using copper conductors. And then notice uh, the uh, power supply from the utility through the meter over to the transfer switch. Then notice these meter connections. Uh, we would review 705.11 D as in dog and 110.14 for terminations. Now, uh, secondly, the uh, grounded conductor with the arrow showing the grounded conductor uh, routed down uh, to the uh, service equipment with the disconnect, notice the grounded circuit conductor or legally required standby system connected remotely to the grounding electrode conductor at the service equipment is how this installation uh, is installed. Then notice that we would review 705.7b as in boy and 705.11d as in dog to obtain uh, this information. And notice uh, we're kind of, uh, that grounded conductor in the transfer switch you see there is tied in solidly and we're not switching the grounded uh, conductor. So that's a, uh, uh, maybe a three pole transfer switch. Uh, as uh, outlined in 250.30, informational notes uh, one and two. So in other words, uh, you could basically say you don't have to uh, ground that uh, generator because a generator, as you see, is grounded uh, to that grounding electrode system at the service equipment with the disconnect, and it's also really grounded back to the utility also where it's earth grounded. So uh, we find that the grounded conductor is not switched in this case. Now... Uh, again, uh, we look, we reference the connections in the transfer switch and the generator. Uh, and we look at 705.11D as in dog, but 110.14 would regulate the size uh, of the overcurrent device. And if you're 100 amps or less, you're 60 degrees C terminals. 
with that, your equipment is marked 60 slash 75. If you're over 100 amps, then you're automatically 75 degrees C terminals. But we, we basically stated that you could take the uh, 90 degree rating of the wire and derate it back to a usable 60 or 75, depending on the marking of the terminals is outlined in 110.14. And the last thing I would like to go over with you uh, in the call-outs uh, is the service equipment with a disconnect. And we want to know how that uh, uh, is regulated and what requirements and in, uh, in what sections would regulate it. And as the first bullet points out, review 705.11c. Why? Well, we, re we review 705 because the service equipment and generator is tied in uh, through the transfer switch that if we lose power uh, from the utility in any reason, the generator will kick in and supply power uh, to the unit. Uh, and then again, you have to classify the generator. And that's in the note one above. We've already called that out uh, uh, to you and, and uh, referenced it so you understand what's taking place here. And then if it's a single main like you see there in a the panel board, which it has to be uh, by 230.71B as in boy, then uh, we would review 230.70B and 230.71B as in boy. And then if you had two to six, uh, excuse me, two to six disconnects, you would review 230.71, which uh, you're allowed two to six, uh, in, uh, individual enclosures, uh, and you could also review uh, 230.72 that states they have to be grouped. But notice in this panel board, as you see there, then we have to have a main ahead of it. We couldn't have just six individual mains in there uh, like the previous uh, code would allow you uh, to maybe have. Now, uh, if you review the note two again, just make sure we Understand that when connections rated over a thousand amps or more on Y systems exceed the 150 volts to ground, like 277, uh, and you're rated uh, greater than a thousand uh, amps uh, uh, on your uh, phases, phase to phase, then ground fault protection would would be required at the service by 230.95. Any feeder. Uh, your ground fault protection for 277, 480 volt, uh, uh, a four wire three phase system, uh, we would see 225.10 for a feeder and 210.13 uh, for a branch circuit. Now, notice the branch circuit was included in the 2017 edition. And then if we have more than six disconnects, then note three says, review 230.2A as an Apple 5, uh, along with 230.40, exception 5, to see if either one of these sections uh, would be needed to uh, regulate your installation where you had more uh, than six disconnects. And then again, along with two. Uh, uh, 230.70, 230.71, and 230.72. Review those along with your note three. You get a good feel for the purpose of change, and then you have the call-outs to uh, help you uh, understand uh, why this new section uh, has been added, and the information and requirements in that section uh, need to be reviewed. So again, if you're dealing with a uh, inadvertent uh, uh, transfer switch, uh, make sure that you review all of these changes that take place in Article 705, especially 705.12, and be sure that one of the uh, changes that took place for any section does not have any kind of impact on your design or your installation or your inspection of this type of a system.